Let's spend some time using the integration service to understand more about the capabilities. The first thing you'll notice when the service is enabled in Automation Cloud is the new integration services tab. This is where you'll find our catalog of connectors available for integrations. The connector is where we build all the logic for interacting with the, uh, with the backend system, and we'll be continuously adding connectors to the catalog on a monthly cadence. We even added a few connectors this week while I've been getting ready for the launch. To use the connector in our UI path products, we establish a connection, which is where we provide credentials and configuration we want to use for our environments and scenarios. We see that I've got quite a few connections already set up in my environment. Let's create a connection to Salesforce to see how this works. I can simply add a connection for Salesforce, uh, select that. And what you'll notice right away is that we take you over to Salesforce um, and and uh, we're utilizing uh, the, the authentication mechanism of that backend system. So uh, we're not storing usernames and passwords. We're not, uh, you know, creating credentials. We're simply uh, utilizing the, the interactive nature of those backend systems through that standardized authentication mechanism. Uh, so I'll just go select one of my uh, users that I've already logged in with. And uh, you'll also notice the next thing is that we have an application set up. Uh, for that backend system. So we'll be doing this anywhere that we can, where the backend systems allow, uh, creating standardized UI path for applications, in this case, uh, UI path for Salesforce, where we'll request the appropriate permissions to that application. And as an end user, you can simply consent uh, to that. And in a few seconds, that will go, um, kind of finish the loop and establish and create that authentication token for us. Uh, so now we've got a connection to Salesforce that we can use throughout our UI path um, uh, platform. I can also uh, do things like uh, utilize some of the actions on the connections. Um, I can check the connection. And in this case, what we'll do is actually utilize the token and try to make a backend um, call to the system or record. In this case, I purposely uh, revoked my permissions to Dynamics to, to force uh, the scenario we see here uh, where I need to fix the connection. This allows us to uh, continuously uh, be aware of what's going on with the connections, making sure they're going to work, and ensuring that we can uh, get failures uh, before the time of need so that we can be able to manage and, and fix those connections. So fixed connection uh, is another kind of simple loop through the authentication mechanism. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm going to Dynamics. I'm going to pick uh, that same account. And again, utilizing the authentication mechanism of that backend system, uh, we saw that I was prompted to, to provide the tenant uh, for, for my CRM instance. Uh, but other than that, it's using, again, that standardized authentication mechanism with the standardized um, consent. So here we are. Uh, we'll get back to our integrations uh, connections list, and we'll see that that has been fixed. So in addition to that, uh, checking connection and fixing, we can also uh, set them as default. Uh, add triggers and, and delete them. Um, adding triggers uh, highlights uh, kind of my last tab in the integration service, which is triggers. And um, we will spend some time in the demo uh, working through creating a trigger and, and wiring that up. So I'll get back to that in a moment. Let's see how all this works inside of our automation. So we'll head over to Studio and we'll see that um, first and foremost, I've got a new uh, category here with a couple uh, activity packs uh, installed. Uh, this um, is where uh, we are now creating uh, metadata-driven activity paths that are based on the metadata of the connectors. Uh, this allows us to provide some consistency in what's available in those activity packs. You notice that we have the same objects, the same activities uh, for ServiceNow and Salesforce. And we're starting with uh, the standard CRUD operations as well as lists, and we'll be bringing things like search and bulk and, and other capabilities over time from that standardized uh, set of, of metadata-driven operations. We'll also be enhancing those with uh, service-specific operations that, that you know and have experienced from, from activity packs in the past. Um, so for this uh, uh, um, automation here, I'm going I'm to work through a scenario where I've got uh, Desk Corp who likes to build custom desks. Uh, they're, they're excited to use new integration service capabilities, and uh, they want to be able to, to kick off a ticket in ServiceNow, which is what they tell the floor, it's how they use the floor uh, management to, to say, we've got enough parts ready to assemble the desk. 
Uh, so knowing when that happens is going to happen when something changes in Salesforce. So an order has been completed. Once that's been completed, and we know that we have everything necessary to start the assembly process. Uh, so we'll start with uh, some interaction with Salesforce. And to know that that has been completed will actually trigger starting this, this uh, process when, when an order has been updated. Uh, but once we're in the process, we're going to want to go get that record that started the process. So I'll just simply drag the get record um, option over here for my Salesforce um, configuration. And before I click on configure, I do want to show that the scope has been connected to my integration service. So I'm picking up that same uh, connection that was available in the integration service tab uh, that's flowed through to my studio uh, environment. here. So when I click on configure, what I'm doing is actually going and using the metadata of that connection to go and interrogate all of the objects available in my Salesforce instance. Uh, so I can go and select the order. And again, this is dynamic. So it's all of the, the objects in my Salesforce instance, and then even more so all the customizations of those objects, uh, including all their custom fields uh, for my organization available to me. Uh, like I mentioned, we want to start this when um, uh, from a trigger when an order has been updated. And what we can provide to you as input arguments from triggers is a set of uh, input variables that you can use in your process. So I'm going to use one of those. I've already configured it, which is the UI path event object ID. Uh, that will match in this case, uh, because I'll set this up to, to trigger off of an order updated, it will be that order ID. Uh, so that'll let me go get the record uh, that I'd like. And I'm going to use this standardized uh, add multiple fields option to uh, to pull a few, uh, a few values out of this to, to use when I create my ticket and service now. So I'm going to go grab the order number, and um, I'm going to go also grab the PO number, uh, which is where uh, this is started in an SAP instance, actually. So we'll go grab those two values. I will store them in some variables uh, for use later. And we are all configured. So now uh, the very next thing we'd like to do is, is use our standardized uh, activity for service now, and we'll, we'll actually do an insert uh, record. We've already configured that as well to, to utilize um, the connections that we've set up in the integration service. Uh, there we go. We found that. Uh, now when we click configure, again, dynamically uh, iterating through all of the thousands of objects I have in this uh, particular service now instance. I can very quickly go and uh, go to grab incident, and we're going to dynamically pull back all the fields available to us for incident. It's a little bit longer. Uh, service now is is a little bit more uh, feature rich uh, with with fields, uh, so it takes a, a few more seconds there. But we'll just grab uh, the value from. Um, the output of this new record uh, as our ticket ID, and we'll just add some uh, some information to the short description uh, to, to make this a little easier to know uh, where this is coming from. So I've got some, some text on my clipboard here uh, with just our Salesforce order reference with a link to it. Great. So next we'd like to um, utilize, as I mentioned, uh, this all started from a PO uh, in an SAP system. We'd like to actually get that PO attached uh, to an email to, uh, to the folks on the field uh, related to the service ticket to, to show a little bit more of our capabilities flowing through to some of our um, classic uh, out-of-the-box uh, activities. Uh, so in Google Drive, as an example, the use Google Drive scope has now been improved. Uh, to, to have integration service capabilities. Uh, in this case here, I can see I've got a property and I'm saying, yes, I would like to use connections. Uh, and I don't have a default connection set up for Google Drive yet, like I did for ServiceNow and Salesforce. Uh, so that's fine. We can, uh, right from within the Studio Experience, uh, select Add New Account. It will take us to that, uh, that same experience that we saw from the Integration Service tab in Automation Cloud. I can go and uh, simply enable again from that same uh, UI path for Google Drive uh, OAuth app that we set up. Um, I'm enabling the, the request for permissions. I'll go ahead and click continue, and it'll create that integration for me. We go back to the studio environment. We'll see it'll go pick up that default connection, and now I can use that uh, with, within the rest of my process. 
Um, I'll just simply show I've already pre-configured the, the steps here. I'm going to go find find that PO number, download that, and then uh, take that a little further, uh, just showing our Microsoft integrations as well. I've got Outlook 365 also uh, with integration service capabilities. In this case, I already have a default connection, and I can um, simply construct an email that will bring that desk part assembly uh, information into the email, uh, send that over to the user, and, and send that uh, PO as an attachment. Uh, so I've already uh, deployed an instance of this, and let's go see what, what happens and how do we set up triggers for this. So let's go back to our integration service tab here, and uh, we want to take that Salesforce connection that I set up previously. We're going to go ahead and add a trigger. Now, again, uh, we're going to go uh, dynamically discover the events that are available for that particular type of connection. Uh, for the first set of connections, we are uh, focusing on, on new uh new and um, updates uh, and occasionally deletes. Uh, we'll add different events and more specific events over time. Uh, the trigger capabilities is in preview right now. Uh, so we would, um, you know, continue to, to, to uh, give us feedback on that, uh, but, but certainly fully capable uh, for, for use at this point in time. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and use an existing record updated. Uh, and then I can see that same list of all of the objects. And in this case, I'm going to go grab order. And now I've got uh, my trigger set up to say when that existing, uh, when an order is updated, go ahead and start that process that I deployed. Um, and you'll notice that that UI path event object ID uh, input variable came through, and that will be mapped at runtime. So again, the, the object, the order ID that, that kicked off the trigger will map into our process allowing us to retrieve that record and continue further. So let's go ahead and add that trigger. And now we'll go over to Salesforce. Uh, let's log in. My, my session expired a little bit there, so we'll log in very quickly here. And I've got an order that I can uh, set to complete. Uh, once that sets to complete, that'll go ahead and kick off my trigger. And once that trigger is kicked off, I'll get an email. That email will show the information that we expect to see. I've got that PO number or that PO as an attachment. I've got the link over to the incident and in service now. And now my field uh, folks, uh, the, oops, uh, you do a quick login. The folks in the field can go and assemble uh, the desk for, uh, for desk work. Uh, the last thing I wanna show is what happens on the assistant side is we, we have those uh, the same flow through of those connections. If I were to go and start that same process in an assisted manner, I can see that those same default connections are, are flowing through. I can kick off and run this, and uh, an attended or unattended are both utilizing this, those same connections. So it's just a quick demonstration of the capabilities of the new integration service.